America's watching ABC. It's Samantha's first prom. Sam, you look. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> One more wow, you're getting an Italian chaperone. But Tony's not ready to let go. Be home by dawn. <laughs> I never thought I'd see that. <laughs> On the next, who's the boss? Monday evening at 7 o'clock. I love the MDA golf tournament. No pressure, no green jacket, just a lot of fun. Paul, what about the hole-in-one contest in that nice loaded 4x4 put up by Valley Toyota? This one's for the pickup. Ooh, you got all of that one. <laughs> That's not how you win the loaded 4x4 pickup from Valley Toyota. Guess I'll have to keep practicing. There's still time for your team to enter, or just join us for the silent auction and banquet. Call Cap TV to enter. And you don't have to be a golfer to participate. All proceeds to the MDA. Dan pulls out all the stops to save Christine's life. He saved Christine? How can I possibly repay you? What does Dan want in return? I can't sleep with you. Will he take no for an answer? Perhaps there are some of us here who are even alive today due to the unselfish generosity of another. Or will Christine finally give in? All right, I'll sleep with him! On the next Night Course. Monday evening at 7.30. You're watching Cap 35 Yakima. ABC News, The Weekend Report. Here's Britt Hume. Good evening. Nature tonight is doing what years of political controversy have failed to do, evacuate American forces from Clark Air Base in the Philippines. Nearby Mount Pinatubo, a volcano dormant for more than 600 years, is erupting, and the U.S. base, considered a vital link in the chain of American bases in the Pacific, is endangered. As Nathan Thomas reports, while some American forces are getting out, they are not leaving the Philippines. This growing cloud of ash and continuing eruptions convinced U.S. military officials to evacuate Clark Air Force Base. The cloud is shooting several thousand feet into the air and red-hot lava is flowing down one side of Mount Pinatubo. Most of the 16,000 U.S. military personnel, dependents, and civilians have been told to drive some 30 miles to Subic Bay Naval Base, where they'll stay in quarters usually used by visiting sailors. Even though most of the volcanic activity is on the side of the mountain away from Clark, officials ordered the massive evacuation early. A small number of essential personnel will remain at Clark. U.S. Air Force planes have been flown to other bases, and commanders say the volcano should pose no danger to weapon systems at the base. More than 11,000 civilians have been evacuated from more than 20 villages near the volcano. The provincial governor said it's raining ashes and people were having trouble breathing. But so far, there have been no serious injuries. But officials fear that there are others like the Bassa family who refuse to leave their rice farm and animals and will remain in the danger area, perhaps until it's too late to escape. Nathan Thomas, ABC News, Manila. In Japan, meanwhile, there has been another eruption of Mount Unzin on the island of Kyushu, about 600 miles south of Tokyo. No casualties reported in this eruption. 38 people were killed when the mountain exploded last Monday, and about 10,000 people have been evacuated from the resort community of Shimabara. Scientists say more and more deadly eruptions are possible. Coming up, how much is too much to save the Soviet economy? The Weekend Report, brought to you by... AT&T. If you don't have AT&T 800 service and trouble hits, who knows how long you could be out. Only AT&T automatically protects you through the 800 assurance policy. With AT&T, you would be guaranteed back in touch in 30 minutes or less. With anyone else? Who knows? But if you do have AT&T, your 800 service is guaranteed. That's not all. Since AT&T connects calls 25% faster and has the fewest block calls, more 800 calls get through. So you can make more sales. With all that, why choose any other 800 service? Better service, better results. Another AT&T Advantage. Call now for free installation. 
Official Washington was still smarting today from Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev's pronouncement in Norway last week, in which he said the Soviet Union is entitled to expect large-scale economic support from the West, and without it, hope for world peace may vanish. The questions the White House and Congress are grappling with now are how much can the U.S. do, and how much is the U.S. willing to do to help Gorbachev give his country some measure of stability. Here's ABC's Kathleen Delasky. Even though Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev has turned his plea for aid into a cataclysmic warning, it wasn't selling in Washington today. Because they haven't made the basic changes in that economic system. And if we just pour money in now, which I do not favor, uh, then that will be like pouring it into the big black hole in space. I do not think that we should be sending massive amounts of taxpayer aid to the Soviet Union. I think that we need that taxpayer dollars in this country. Many lawmakers are also reluctant to give the Soviets special trade deals. Uh, even though, you know, we've been even talking about a 1.5 billion in export credit guarantees for grain. Uh, we don't want to make that deal unless we're going to be repaid. Even Boris Yeltsin is criticizing Gorbachev's plea for money, calling it undignified. Now the Soviet government is showing signs of backing off. At least one official is now stressing that technical assistance is what the Soviets need to foster a market economy. What Gorbachev is looking for now, he is asking for the direct participation of the West, of the U.S., in the Soviet domestic reform. The administration is responding cautiously as officials wrestle with a difficult task. How to support democratic reforms without directly financing a man whose track record on reforms is far from perfect. Kathleen Delasky, ABC News, Washington. A team of United Nations experts is headed to Baghdad for a first-hand appraisal of Iraq's stockpile of chemical weapons. Their job, to oversee the destruction of Iraq's non-conventional weapons as ordered by the UN Security Council after the Gulf War. Israel's Prime Minister Shamir revealed today that President Bush had offered him a trade-off. If Israel freezes new settlements in the occupied Arab lands, Israeli conditions for convening a Middle East peace conference would be met. Shamir wants Palestinians to be represented within a Jordanian delegation to any peace talks, with Israel able to veto participation by any Palestinian it objects to. Monday morning financial markets are already open in Asia. In Tokyo, the Nikkei Stock Exchange opened down nearly 1.5%, and the dollar opened up 0.99 yen. In Hong Kong, gold opened down at $365.55 an ounce. And when we come back, a place where drinking and dancing don't mix. Here's big news about the garden weasel. I've been telling you about this amazing five-in-one tool for years. And now, the tool used by millions of gardeners is on sale. During the National Garden Weasel Sale Spectacular, the original garden weasel with a lifetime warranty is on sale. But hurry, this special is good only while supplies last. The garden weasel. Look for this display. The garden weasel is available at participating Ace, True Value, Trustworthy, and Walgreens. If you're trying to decide between an Isuzu Trooper with the most cargo space in its class and an Isuzu Rodeo with the most overall passenger space, take your time. After all, at these prices, you can afford to be choosy. Isuzu, there's no comparison. Choose a Trooper now and you could save up to $2,000 during Isuzu's big deal. Kids volunteering to help others as a requirement for graduation. Sounds great, so why are people trying to stop it? Watch Peter Jennings on ABC's World News Tonight this week. In Gainesville, Florida, a 29-year-old carpet cleaner is being held without bond tonight after being arraigned on charges of first-degree murder. Police say Alan Robert Davis confessed to strangling two University of Florida women. Police also say the slayings are not connected to the serial killings of four women and one man in Gainesville last August. It's an ancient ritual, a time-honored rite of passage, and it's an in-season right now. The senior prom, a pivotal point in al almost everyone's life, but sometimes for the wrong reason. ABC's Steve Shepard reports on a program in Maryland that succeeded in keeping the senior prom an experience that teenagers will be able to remember the next morning and for the rest of their lives. It's prom night for Lock Raven High. Here in suburban Baltimore, the class of 91 is honoring American tradition by discovering the discomforts of formal wear. Oh, real still, good. And the agony of sitting for photos that will be treasured or laughed at for a lifetime. 
But in at least one respect, Lock Raven High is breaking with ancient custom. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Here, prom night will not be followed by all-night drinking parties and the car accidents that go with them. Instead, most seniors are attending an alcohol and drug-free after-prom party organized by Baltimore County and the PTA. It's to give the young people a place to go after the prom when they're more likely to go out and drink, do drugs, get themselves in trouble. The party is chaperoned by teachers and parents, a prospect almost guaranteed to put off any teenager. But with music, food, and drawings for first-rate prizes, this event had no trouble attracting prom goers especially since they could leave any time they wanted. So I think a lot of them, knowing that they had that option, were willing to come and at least find out before they just rule it out altogether. It was a lot better in time. I didn't think it was going to be this fun. The after-prom program, which began experimentally seven years ago, is now available to all 22 public high schools in Baltimore County and is attracting interest around the country. Backers say they are certain it has prevented tragedy. Since Project Prom Night, we have not had a single alcohol or drug-related accident during a Baltimore County prom. Baltimore County is sure it is onto something good. At 5 this morning, these teenagers drove home safely with no hangovers to cure and no tragedies to regret. Steve Shepard, ABC News. In New York tonight, America's top military officials were jeered by protesters during a memorial service for the Gulf War dead. Defense Secretary Dick Cheney, Joint Chiefs of Staff Chairman Colin Powell, and General Norman Schwarzkopf spoke at the Cathedral of St. John the Divine. But protesters interrupted their remarks with chants of murderer, murderer. All the protesters were removed by police. There was only one arrest. More than two million spectators are expected in Manhattan tomorrow for a victory parade for the veterans of Operation Desert Storm. And we'll be back in just a moment. There's a small manufacturing company in Virginia that manufactured quite a large set of long distance bills last year. These blow-ups show they spent $17,583. If they switch to MCI Preferred, our ingenious new long-distance service for small businesses, all their monthly charges will be organized into one simple bill. The combined total will be discounted to save them almost $1,800 this year. Now you know why we call it Preferred. If you're concerned about getting rid of weeds this way, Try a better way. I'm Jim Martindale, here to introduce you to the Weed Popper. Place the Weed Popper next to a weed, step down, and the weed pops right out. The Weed Popper pulls weeds without kneeling, bending, and without chemicals that may be dangerous to our groundwater supply. The Weed Popper, with its 100% lifetime guarantee, pops weeds out as easy as one, two, three. The Weed Popper is available at Kmart, Walgreens, and participating Ace and Trustworthy Hardware stores. Makes a great gift for friends who garden. Monday, take what you deserve, an all-American vacation, the most unique getaways America has to offer. Then later in the week, Kevin Costner on Good Morning America. Ray Gandolf devotes his sports commentary tonight to those two Americans in Paris who played for the French tennis championship today in a battle of booming forehands. Ray? Brit, the French are much too sensible to ride roller coasters. But they did appreciate a couple of Americans going up and down, round and round today. And what a ride it was. In the first All-American men's final at the French Open since 1954, Andre Agassi began by beating on Jim Courier like a drum, winning the first set handily. Then, after a couple of rain delays, Courier came out smoking and won the second set. Then it was Agassiz's turn on the top of the roller coaster, going up two sets to one as Courier sprayed errors all over the stadium. But then it was Courier who rose and Agassiz who plunged. Playing in his second straight French final, Agassiz faltered for the second time. Courier won the fourth set easily and in the fifth served an ace to win his first Grand Slam tournament in his first final. Agassiz and Courier have been more or less friendly rivals for much of their young lives. Today, the late-blooming Courier flourished while Agassiz faded like a morning glory. The fable of the tortoise and the hare comes to mind 
An Agassiz could certainly pass for a rabbit, but who ever saw a turtle wearing a baseball cap? Britt? Thanks, Ray. And that's the late news this Sunday night. I'm Britt Hume for all of us here at ABC News. Good night. From Washington, this has been the Weekend Report. This has been a presentation of ABC News. More Americans get their news from ABC News than from any other source.